Evan and Creek Nations, Coach Abel. Um, here for a random Friday update. Lots of confusion going on this week, so I wanted to kind of clarify some things before the weekend hit, okay? Let's get to it. Hopefully going to keep this between five and ten minutes. The schedule for this week, uh, guys, we're, we're here tonight for practice. We are here Saturday for practice from 10 a.m. to noon. That's been something that's communicated for the past week or two. Uh, we've let guys know this sucks. I, I hate it for these guys. I don't want guys to call in a call off work, uh, but we have to figure out how to manage the situation the best that we can. Uh, this Saturday, <clears throat> the, the, the 10 a.m. to noon practice is all about that acclimatization piece that we've discussed in these previous videos. Uh, we have to make sure our kids get enough days in there in, in with practice in their appropriate equipment uh, before we can um, uh, ask them to or have them play in, in, in a game. Uh, Saturday, if you look at the schedule on the Teams app, is beautification day. There are going to be people up there, some uh, some other parents. There's going to be some uh, uh, volunteers from the from the church. Um, if you are free and want to come up, we would appreciate the help. But there still is practice as well. So are the kids going to be asked to do a couple of things before or after practice? Sure, yeah, absolutely. But uh, it, we're not solely – Saturday's practice is not solely a beautification day. We are going to get out in our equipment so we can meet their, that acclimatization requirement. And we're going to get out and, and get some football done. Next week, and this is huge because that people are struggling. I've got some players, and, and I know some of you as parents are struggling with this, too, to, to, to find transportation for your kids as you're getting off work or, or whatever uh, is happening. Uh, and I definitely understand where we're all coming from, but we're going to have to do our best to manage this, whether that's card passes or – um, you know, I, I'm not sure calling relatives, uh, but unfortunately we have to start practice at six. Uh, that's for everybody. And that starts on Tuesday. Nothing is on Monday. Labor day is, is Monday. So everybody's off then, uh, but Tuesday through Friday next week. And then from that point on, we start at six o'clock. Okay. And as we get closer to the fall, we'll have to move that time up again because we're running out of daylight. We don't have lights on our practice field. We, we sure as sure that can't play on our practice on the game field. We have to make make do with what we've got. And so six o'clock is the best that we can do. OK, other schools are practicing during the school time. I, I haven't decided to do that simply because I don't think that many of our kids could get there uh, with you guys working <clears throat> with them working. Um, I think that would be really, really tough. So that's why we scheduled it at, at six o'clock uh, and, and going no earlier than earlier than five thirty as we progress to the fall. Okay. I just wanted to remind everybody of that and give you all the reasons why. Other updates, mouthpieces we we talked about last week. The players were reminded this week. Mouthpieces got to, have got to stay on their helmet. They need to stay in their mouths. We're going to try to, to coach that up and, and train the guys to do that. Officials do not want guys grabbing the mouthpiece, mouthpiece throwing it back in their mouth, back and forth. That's apparently how, how the virus spreads. I think it's pretty silly considering that we're going out there to play a tackle sport. Uh, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna follow the rules because they're the rules, uh, even if we disagree with them. We are ordering gators for our players for the sideline. We're hoping that they'll be here by the scrimmage, but if not, we need to make sure that everybody has something that they can do in the meantime. A lot of our guys are still coming in with the mask, and that's fine for now. But they have to be able to uh, have something they can easily put on and, and take off in game. A lot of guys are taking their mask and putting it in places on their body that it doesn't need to go. And so we, we're hoping we can get some some gators here for these guys. Uh, water, water, guys are bringing in disposable water bottles and that's okay, but that's 12 ounces. These guys are, are, are losing 64 to 120 ounces per practice. They have to replenish that. So we are encouraging guys to, to go out to Kroger and buy the igloos or the thermoses or the Coleman's, those large things that you might take to work with you. Uh, that something needs to happen here pretty soon, uh, especially as, uh, as we get closer to to uh, game time. Uh, last thing, here is our uh, our uh, updated schedule here. If you notice, the Butler scrimmage is set uh, for 11 a.m. next Saturday. We'll give the players more uh, uh, information about that later on. I do have to tell you, and I regret to tell you this, but the Butler scrimmage is no fans. Uh, I'm sorry. This is the trial run. We've got to figure out how to do this. But every game from that point on, we're going to have fans in the stands. I don't know where this rumor got started. There's no fans. I think Twitter is on fire with a bunch of these things. Each district is coming up with their own uh, attendance regulations. For us, it's 20 percent state in capacity with no school being in session and no students trying to come to games. I don't think this is going to be a problem for us. 
However, what I do advise for you guys to do, this was news to me today, is visit GoFan.com. GoFan.com looks like this when you uh, when you click on it. Uh, you'll, you'll find our page. It'll say search for your school. You type in Fern Creek and boom, this is what, what shows up. It's just like buying tickets on Ticketmaster or, or uh, StubHub. Uh, game tickets are $10. The season pass is $75. That seems to be a steal. I haven't really researched that a whole lot, but I encourage you guys to do so. Um, this, this is the new platform. We have to do these things online. I know a lot of us don't do things online. A lot of us still pay cash. Uh, unfortunately, because of contact tracing, we they want to be able to track who is at these events. So we're trying to encourage everyone to, to use GoFan.com. Best part is you can you can do it straight from your phone. As you, you forgot to buy tickets earlier, as you walk up to the door, you'll see the little QR code. You scan it, boom, you're you're on the website. Okay. If again, I mentioned this before, if you're someone that that can't afford uh, the tickets, if you're someone that that doesn't feel comfortable going out in public, if we've got grannies and aunties and uncles and, and distant relatives. They can't come to Louisville for these things. We are hoping that the National Federation of High School Athletics Streaming Network is going to be up very, very soon. We're hoping, hope, great fingers crossed, that we can do a dry run for the Butler scrimmage and that by Ballard, it, it's official. OK, uh, but stay tuned. More information about that is coming. All right. Lastly, just reminders, we're doing a great job on physicals and waivers. Just be sure to continue to get those in. Player fees were also uh, taken care of. Most of you guys, uh, about 90 percent of you guys have done done your part, and I appreciate that. Now it's time we got to get that insurance paid off. Uh, that insurance, as a reminder, is the $20 catastrophic insurance paid directly to the uh, Kentucky High School Athletic Association. Uh, if you want to write a check for, for your own purposes, that's fine. Don't write it to Fern Creek High School Boosters. Write it, write it just to Fern Creek High School, okay? In the bottom left-hand corner uh, from the memo, you can put uh, football insurance. Lastly, NTI 2.0, we talked about it this past week. Lots of issues still with some of our guys. Lots of issues with some of our teachers. We're working through these issues. But what I will tell you is that uh, criteria for that 60-man roster is going to be based solely off of academics. Um, guys that play in-game, that's, you know, who plays and who doesn't play, who's suspended, who's punished. All that stuff is all – that's football-oriented. Who makes that 60-man roster? That's going to be academically oriented. And with, with we're almost to 100 kids at this point. We've got 94. I've got a few more transfers that have popped in. Uh, that, that just found out that they weren't going to be at their other schools and so forth and so on. Um, so we're creeping. Our numbers are, are, are back in, in really, really high numbers. And, and uh, that 60 man roster is going to be competitive. So uh, please encourage your guys to make sure that they're, they're participating in NCI, that they're not missing their time. They're, they're logging in during that six minute morning time and, and everything should be fine. OK. All right. That's all I got for you. I uh, hope it's great in the fear. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Coach Abel out.